Welcome everybody to our special mini video on Memories of Lambton Tavern project where we're trying to recapture the interior of the tavern by sleuthing into the past. Once the Lambton unceremoniously closed in July of 1988, we discovered that there's not a lot of pictures of the interior of the building. And unfortunately, when they took it over in July of 1988, the whole inside was gutted. Everything was taken out and stripped as far as we could tell and guarded by guards as it was taken away in the big garbage bins. However, we have come across a number of pictures provided by people which are allowing us to rebuild what the inside looked like based on that and some other sources of material, including conversations, stories, whatever we can get from people. So let's get started. What we have here is to show you the difference between copies of copies of pictures and the value of an original photo or negative to create a new photo from. On the left, you can see this picture it looks pretty good. It's a little faded, the color's not the greatest and not as sharp as potentially could be. Once we spoke to the person who provided this picture, we're able to get a new scan of the picture and you'll notice how much brighter it is but also you will note the extra data or about 15 percent more of the picture is visible in this and you can see specifically i'm looking at the two pinball machines because they are entities that we should be able to use to both date the picture and there's enough detail of the surroundings the background the windows the wainscoting and other elements to give us a good idea where this picture was taken and we can date it plus or minus a number of years. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we take the picture here and you'll see on the lower left, which is taken from that previous picture and we can see a lot of detail. So after going through the pinball database, which took a while, we're able to determine it was called Joker Poker from the D. Gottlieb and Company, first manufactured in summer of 1978. So first off, we know the picture could not precede 1978 as that pinball machine would not have been available. And this is what it looks like. And if you look at the picture, you can see how it is an exact match for the one that's in the picture. And to give you another idea too, you'll see that on the inside, the screen give you an idea what it looked like. It was a very popular pinball machine back then. So we now know what it is, what it was called, and when it was manufactured. Now, there was a second pinball machine in there, and we'll see again through this picture. And you'll see the pinball machine between the two gentlemen's heads on the left-hand side. But once again, once we get to the original picture, look at the amount of detail we have. At least 25 to 30 percent more picture is available to us, including the fact that we can now date it to particularly the time of year, judging by the red Christmas bells hanging from the ceiling. You'll see in the upper left hand corner and on the right hand side, what looks to be a Christmas ornament, possibly a Christmas tree. And Second, another thing that we were aware of, you'll see the sign that says photo ID required and all the little things that they had to do. So we now have two pictures. Now let's see if we can figure out what that pinball machine is. Again, going to the pinball database using that picture from the left hand side, you'll see it's the Paragon from the Bali Manufacturing Corporation, which came out in the summer of 1979. So now we know that the actual picture probably came out after 1980. Again, this was manufactured in the States and brought into Canada. So the odds of it being in the Lambton before 1980 are probably little to none. And it was a very, again, a very popular and one of the first fully electronic pinball machines of its time. Very popular and very bright. Now, here's something people can find fascinating. One of the things we did once it was closed and 
before they started to work on any of the renovation or do any work for the 1993 bicentennial for the city of York, I personally took my father's big monstrous uh, VCR recorder and walked through the building with as best I could do with what little lighting there was. And it took a lot of digital manipulation to get this picture. But again, I want to point out, this was the inside of the tavern in April of 91. And you can see enough detail that we should be able to match this particular picture up with the pictures we saw. And sure enough, here's one of the pictures and the two pictures. And there's a picture I just pointed out. Now, if you were to take what's in this square, you can see the radiator, the window, the corner with the brown stripe on it. You can see the wainscoting. It's amazing how much detail we can get out of that. And it's secondary in this other picture, we can actually see around the corner to the right to where that more detail on that little island. Again, we can see the Christmas tree and the Christmas balls and the such. So we can safely say that they were located probably just about where the women and escorts wording is there, just about the at sign. And how would you get there? You walk in the front door, turn left into the women and escorts section, and on that south wall uh, facing Old Dundas, you can see where the two pinball machines were, which match up with the picture. So with sleuthing like this, we can actually identify where the pictures were taken what, and have an idea of what the building looked like in that time frame. Seeing as that's the only picture I have right now of that part of the building, we can see what it looked like when it was in use, and we can also see what it looked like after it was damaged. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that now we have other pictures from the inside taken approximately the same time, and again manipulated so we have some nice clean pictures, so should we get other pictures, we would be able to use snapshots such as these to help locate where the pictures were. Now, the only downside is for pictures that are in the north wing, which was demolished, and that's really what we're trying to identify more of. So with the help of pictures and stories and memories of people who drank there, visited there, played there, just had a happy time there, we're slowly building an archive of what the inside looked like. And we would like to ask that everyone out there who has memories or pictures of their times at the Lampton House, whether it was from the 1970s through to the closing of the 1988, we'd love to get our hands on copies of those and do what we did with here and have the ability to rebuild the interior view of the Lampton at specific time frames so people get a feel for the actual use and activity of the building. On that note, I would suggest that you email any questions, queries, pictures, photographs, memories, stories to Lampton Tavern at lamptonhouse.org, which is on the lower left. And at that point, I will thank you for paying attention to my little video here and how you can use the sleuthing of pictures of the Lampton when it was active to rebuild and recreate the interior and actually use it to time the pictures as well. Therefore, have a great day and uh, thanks for your time.